Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Thekus N5810 Pro. This is the first NAS that I've seen that has a built-in battery backup. It runs Linux, so it must be good, right? Let's take a look. All right, today, we're gonna to take a look at the Thekus N5810 Pro. Now, we've taken a look at these before, and I, I kinda of like these. Look, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm a big advocate of having a home server. Why? Why do you need a home server? It just makes sense, look. I reinstall Windows, I reinstall Linux. I've got like 12 different computers that I use on a regular basis. And sometimes something happens and I get so pissed off that I really just, it's like, all right, I'm starting over. I'm just gonna format everything and destroy everything. Well, mostly that's true of the Windows machines. It's not really as true of the Linux machines. But the reason that you have a home server is because the home server takes care of backing up all your important data, your home directory, your home directory on Windows, your user folder on Windows or whatever you wanna call it. The, the documents that you create, pictures, other information that's useful for games and things like that, especially games that you download from good old games, backing that up to a network storage, it just makes sense. I for, for many years, I've not run a significant amount of storage space in my main computer, really just enough room to do some work and play games and everything else is stored on, on a home server, a home storage solution. Backups of my machines are all on there. So if something unexpected happens or I lose something, I can basically, you know, hit the ground running. I've got the Surface Pro 3. It's like, oh, something bad happened with the Surface Pro 3. They're gonna mail me a new one. All right, sounds good. Plug it into my network, hit a button. Basically the Surface Pro 3, the new one is up and running to the same state as the old one was because I had good backups. I like doing it myself. If you don't wanna do it yourself, this is one of the very few products that I have seen that lets you basically have a home server without all of the headache. Now, I like to build them. There's nothing wrong with building them. Building them will give you a lot more horsepower. But if you're in a small apartment in the city and you don't have a lot of room for toys and you know having 12 computers laying around and you know you might have a computer and another computer and maybe a portable computer maybe you have roommates i don't know something like this actually would work really well these also do double duty for the home theater situation your like your home theater or your entertainment center because these have an hdmi output so the big difference with this model and the previous model from Thekus, because we took a look at the other one you'll recall, is that they've added a battery backup. This thing has built in a battery backup, which will shut the system down in the event of a power outage. This is huge because they're using Linux on this. This is You're basically gonna run a Linux server. They've turned it into an appliance, but they've done a really good job packaging it up. So I really have to sort of give them kudos for that. You're basically gonna run a Linux server at home. And if you run a Linux server at home, and you're running MD, which is Linux's software RAID, because of the RAID write hole, when your computer restarts, Linux doesn't know if the disks are out of sync. So it's gotta resync the disks. Basically it has to rewrite the parity or error correction information. This is bad if you have a situation where you have a hardware failure and then an unexpected power failure because you get into a situation where there's something is bad and Linux doesn't know if the parity information is good because of the right hole, it, it has no memory of, of what exactly happened. So this, the 5810 Pro, has a built-in battery unit that keeps the whole thing running and then shuts the system down normally in the event of a power loss. It works really well, it's very slick. Because of that, you should never encounter the RAID right hole on this particular piece of hardware unless there's some kernel problem with the Linux kernel or some other software problem. So this is a really big feature for this. This is really big in terms of, you know, making sure that your, your data basically stays intact. So in terms of other features and other stuff that they've added, this one also now has five gigabit ports. So instead of having two ports, you could actually use this as your switch. So let's say that you've got a, a gigabit router and that's got some ports on it. And then you've got this thing. Well, you can use this as your switch and you'll basically be connected directly to storage. In that way, you're making sure that you're, you don't have any bottlenecks. But again, I'm thinking of, you know, if somebody had a small apartment or, you know, and not particularly a lot of computers, this thing can do double duty as your home server. And it solves all of the, the lofty goals for having a home server. It solves the problem of the multimedia interface for the living room PC because this model is also significantly quieter than the previous model. Although I don't know if it's quite quiet enough to tolerate in a living room that you have, you know, that you have your stuff in. It depends on how big your living room is and how far away it is and if you could put it like behind a piece of furniture. I think it's fine, me personally, but give a listen to it 
and you know, I'll try to record it on video here and see what you think. I think it's fine. It's actually significantly quieter than the previous generation, but depending on the drives that you use and some other parameters, maybe it will be too loud for you. I don't know, but you can use it as uh, you know, as a home theater thing. You can run, you know, Cody XBMC, whatever you want to call it, directly from this thing, and it basically works okay. They've also upped the RAM in this, so this this motherboard on the inside is a dual slot configuration now. Um, so you can run DDR if you want, but it comes with a single four gig stick. So out of the box, this thing comes with four gigs of RAM. I didn't see any warranty void stickers. So probably you could add more RAM to it if you wanted, because it does run Linux after all. So maybe give that maybe give that a try if you want. But be sure if you have to send it in for warranty service that you take out the RAM and make sure that uh, you know that, that was not the problem. Because it's like, oh, I added RAM. I got it from some guy off the street and it was fine for a while and then it stopped. Yeah, don't don't waste their time if you if you modify the the system after the fact. So it does have USB three, so you can plug in USB three hard drives for more storage or extra backup storage and that kind of thing. Some other features that it has, it comes with McAfee antivirus, and so the antivirus will actually live on your network storage and disinfect your files. I don't think most people really need this, but I guess it's an okay feature. I mean, McAfee's from Intel. I don't really like it, but. You know, you might. It is better probably to have some kind of an antivirus on your storage device than none, depending on, you know, who it is and what's copying stuff. So maybe your friends or your roommates or whatever, you don't know where they go on the internet. You don't know what they're doing. Maybe having something on there to do disinfection would be good. In terms of backup options, using this for backup, you've actually got three options. So this can actually replicate with another device. So let's say that you've got, you're doing this in a small office configuration. You've got two of these. You can replicate one to the other offsite. And what's happening underneath uh, there is that Linux is basically doing the work. It's doing sort of this, this rsync thing. So it's not stupidly copying the files from one to another. Let's say that you've got I don't know, a 400 meg PowerPoint presentation and you open it up and you make some changes and then you save it again. This is not gonna transfer all 400 megs to another one of these that you might have set up offsite in replication. It's only gonna transfer the parts of the file that you changed. So in that way, you're realistically able to keep multiple terabytes backed up offsite with one of these, even though you may not have a, an internet connection that can move multiple terabytes of data in any reasonable amount of time. Of course, it also supports the Dropbox Element Drive and Amazon S3, so you can back up to those places as well, which is a nice feature. In terms of backup snapshot software, it comes with a Cronus snapshot, which you can use on your client computers to take snapshots of them and store the information on the NAS. So like the scenario I said before, where it's, uh, you know, it's a situation where I've returned a machine under warranty and I'm gonna get my machine back. They're gonna send me a new one and I gotta send the old one back, but the new one's gonna be completely blank. It's not gonna have my stuff set up on it. Well, the Acronis uh, snapshot you can use to make a, a snapshot of your workstation exactly as it is. Maybe that's part of your backup strategy and you're doing that weekly. So when you restore it, it restores you exactly to where you were because the backup is a full snapshot of the entire machine. It's not just your documents and files, it's the entire machine, installed programs, the whole nine yards. People on Mac are saying, oh yeah, Time Machine can do that. Well, yeah, Time Machine can do that. And this is compatible with that. So you can do that and it's fine. So in case you're wondering what's under the hood, well, it's an Intel Baytrail DJ1900. That's a system on chip. It comes with four gigabytes of DDR3, but you can do a dual channel configuration. So you could upgrade it to eight or 16 gigabytes if you wanted to replace the memory. Although don't tell them that I told you to do that. You wouldn't really need to unless you're going to be doing really crazy stuff with this. I mean, it does run Linux under the hood and you can modify it and do all sorts of interesting things. But if you're buying this to avoid the headache of doing all that, then you don't really need to mess with that. It's fine. It's got five internal SATA hard drive base. You can use two and a half inch drives with this if you want to, but it's set up for three and a half inch drives. It's got three USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, one HDMI out, one line audio out, or one audio out that's at line levels. And then it's got five gigabit ethernet interfaces. In terms of software features, you know, of course you can do RAID 0, 1, RAID 5, 6, 10, and JBOD. Um, it's got multiple file system options. You can do ext3, ext4, xfs, and btrfs. Now do note the btrfs is on top of MD. They have not yet updated the Linux kernel 
to support uh, BTRFS with RAID 5 support. The, the reality is that Linux kernel 4.1, which is still in beta when I'm making this video, is very close to being out. It's almost there, it's not quite. So I'd say by the time this is actually out, 4.1 will be out. They tell me that BTRFS is basically stable for a multi-disc configuration at this point. And so that would be better than running BTRFS on MD because with BTRFS on MD, BTRFS can't see the file system structure. And so you can use the snapshot ability of BTRFS, that's nice. But I don't think you really get too much from the redundancy component of BTRFS. So I think you're gonna be relying on MD for the redundancy there. Uh, that's unfortunate, but that's owing to the fact that uh, kernel 4.1 is not yet on this. However, the history that we have with Thekus and sort of talking to their engineers, they've been very good about updating previous units and they've been Johnny on the spot with getting the updates out. So I think even though this does not yet support BTRFS without Linux MD, I can pretty much guarantee that a future version of the software is gonna let you run BTRFS without relying on Linux multi-disk support. It'll just use the native BTRFS support. However, they're not gonna do that until after it's been really well tested. So, you know, Kane went to a thing in New York with one of the core people on BTRFS uh, that works inside of Facebook, I think, doing stuff with BTRFS. And he was asking about all this. And the Facebook guy, the guy from Facebook or the developer that he talked to basically said, yeah, everything should be good in, in kernel 4.1 uh, with multi-disc and, and that sort of thing. BTRFS for RAID 1, basically fine. You don't need, you don't need uh, MD support for that. that. That had always worked fine. Um, one thing that we found in our testing is that before kernel 4.1, you had to use the BTRFS scrub command, which had only been created for a few months in order to repair errors that were cropping up in BTRFS. So we, you know, from that video, we introduced errors into a file system and the errors were not corrected until we ran the BTRFS scrub command. Now, when BTRFS encountered those errors, it didn't actually say, oh, I encountered an error, but I went ahead and fixed it because I knew there was an error there because it has error detection and correction. So that's, that's what BTRFS is for. It didn't log anything about those errors. I suspect we would have had to have used a debugger in order to see those problems. But when we ran the scrubber command for BTRFS, it found and corrected the errors on our BTF, BTRFS test pool. And so those are the kinds of things that the engineers at Thekus are gonna have to work out um, in order to offer BTRFS support not on top of MD, the Linux's multi-disc. When, when you're doing BTRFS on top of MD, you're just using BTRFS as a file system and not its resiliency stuff, not necessarily. So it's not really the same situation as BTRFS on raw native disks. I would also like to see ZFS support now that ZFS on Linux is a thing, but they would probably have to bump up the RAM storage from four to eight gigabytes. So of course the enclosure, you know, this is hot swap. You can do hot swap, hot spare, uh, raid level volume and uh, raid migration because Linux MD supports raid level migration. So that's cool. They've got a neat web interface for all that. It does have, uh, the web UI still does have built in CD, DVD, burning capabilities. So if you want to use a CD burner or a DVD burner to copy stuff off, you can plug it in with USB and then copy whatever you need to. It doesn't come with a CD burner or DVD burner, obviously, but you can use that to back up your stuff. Uh, it also has support for AES-256 uh, RAID encryption, which again is owing to the Linux support for that. This is the Thekus App Center. Now what they've done is basically packaged a bunch of open source applications and made it easy to install on the NAS. So you can install everything from Bucket, a Minecraft server, although you know there's a limited CPU horsepower in here, so keep that in mind. But you can also install Apache and OwnCloud and Drupal. You can do LifeRay. There's just tons and tons of applications that you can install. There are also some officially supported applications that it comes with, which includes like the transmission BitTorrent client. So you can just drag and drop torrent files to your NAS and your NAS will take care of BitTorrenting it for you and, and downloading it. Same with a whole bunch of other plugins. You can even run OwnCloud. OwnCloud has got a few more extra setup steps, so it's a little tricky to install. But OwnCloud is the open source Dropbox replacement. And so you can actually run that on your NAS and not actually be so dependent on the cloud. And it works because this is the Linux box. Now, of course, because it is a Linux box, you can also SSH into it and, and do whatever. But if you break stuff, eh, support's not gonna be able to help you. But if you're SSHing in, you should know what you're doing, right? So all in all, this is a pretty, pretty standard unit. Yes, you can build something that has a similar feature set, 
but this is polished and ready to go. It just, it comes down to what you want. If you want a home server and you want to have all the features of a home server, being able to re-image your computer and change around your hardware without having to shuffle your drives around or make sure that all your stuff is backed up, then you need a home server and you need a home server that actually is going to store all your pictures and movies and important stuff and configuration and game settings and images of your, your computers and maybe tied into your home theater, your home entertainment system, because it's all just data. I mean, the, the connected wired home is all about storage and hard drive space for all of that. Movies, music, computer files, programs, it's all the same. And so having a central hub for that in your house means that that stuff is going to survive for you know one year, two years, five years, ten years, on down the road. It's going to be resilient. It's going to be with you. And if you're like me, the volume of data that you produce, <laughs> the cloud options are not really going to work for you. I mean, cloud option may be for a backup, but... I'm just going to keep everything in Dropbox. Uh, that's not going to work for me and probably not going to work for you either if you're watching this video. So I would encourage you to check out the N5810 Pro. Maybe we're going to do some special projects with this. It's a, it's a pretty neat setup. If you are more on the Windows side of things, there is actually a version of this that uses the Windows Storage Server 2012R2. And that one actually does come with more RAM and some other options. Uh, they're still working out some things with the Server 2012R2 version of this. But I would strongly encourage you to take a look at this for basically a ready-to-go Linux server that you can run in your house. This thing can support hosting a VPN from your internet connection, so you can VPN in to your own internet connection depending on how you set that up. It's Linux. I mean, there's a world of possibilities. You've got almost as many possibilities with the Linux side as you do with this. So I really think that you should check out the product if you're thinking about looking for those kind of things. So. If you picked one of these up and you're having any problems or you have any questions or you have any ideas, hit us up in the forums at techsyndicate.com. I'm Wendell, and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.